This will be the trigger point for global banks to revalue their unencumbered gold reserves. So not only did gold pass a multi-year all-time high, but the price manipulation for gold is obvious. At $2,147, it's down already 6% on the weekly candles, getting suppressed down. But gold is getting ready to break out, and the reevaluation for the price of gold is in the works right now. And they're talking about reevaluating gold upwards of $3,000, $5,000, $20,000, even $25,000. So how that will affect the markets for commodities is going to be very interesting, and we're going to discuss some massive plays happening in the space right now, specifically a U.S. congressional bill that's set for a vote in January of 2024 that will cement crypto as a commodity and not a security. And so we have to discuss what that means for the entire crypto market, specifically XRP, gearing up for a massive move to the upside. The entire total crypto market cap, excluding Bitcoin on where we are in this macro market bull, bull cycle. Also, Bitcoin's price chart and then what that means for altcoins because with the amount of money that's in the stock market the amount of money that's in real estate the amount of money that's in precious metals right now people are looking for the best industry to invest to become wealthy and as always don't buy don't sell anything we talk about on our channel it's not financial advice i always provide you guys with public information educational purposes only it's up to you to do your own research because you know you're not here to sell your family family farm and dump the entire house in your life savings in the crypto market. This is very, very risky. In fact, I do have some warnings for you guys in this video on why we could see a correction here soon. But on the other side, how that correction might not be as deep as most people think. So comment 777 if you're feeling blessed. Comment 777 if you're feeling bullish. And let's run it. All right, bull runners, welcome back to the channel. So the past week has been massive in the crypto space. We've seen 63% for Avalanche, 47% for Cardano, 14% for Solana. Although Solana's up $73, it's been on a on a ripper Maguski the past the past month or two. XRP not doing too much right now. Sitting at 65 cents, 35 billion dollar market cap. So XRP is still hanging out. And when XRP will run next, we're going to discuss based on what's happening with Bitcoin, because when you compare Bitcoin to the last market cycle, and we go back to the bull run that took place, when we broke out from the high of 2019, you guys saw Bitcoin get rejected right here during DeFi summer of June of 2019. So this resistance for Bitcoin was around $13,800. And so when Bitcoin broke from this resistance, it didn't get rejected from it, it just broke right through it. The only consolidation period we saw for Bitcoin is really at the, the high of 2017, but Bitcoin didn't come back down to back test it. You know, a lot of people are expecting, you know, Bitcoin to struggle at the high of 2019 to even get rejected from the high of uh, 2000, 2017 for the last bull run, but that didn't happen. Bitcoin consolidated, you know, in an uptrend for about 28 days for a month before breaking even higher, rallying upwards of $41,000 by January of 2021 and a little minor correction to 29K and then a final rally up to $65,000. Correction, dead cat bounce for the complacency stage, then anxiety, denial, panic, anger, capitulation. And the bears, the thing that happened here is the bears at about $15,000 that were waiting or the macro bulls that wanted a better deal were waiting for Bitcoin to fall off the shelf one more time and go down to $12,000 because they were comparing the percentage that Bitcoin lost during the last bull run and the bull run before then of about 84%, whereas this bear market, right, Bitcoin only dropped 77%. So people were waiting for an 84% correction down to 10 or 12K to buy into Bitcoin, and that didn't happen. So that's a telltale sign that this bull run is going to look different than this bull run right here, and then it's going to look a little bit different than this bull run right here. So for the people that are calling for a correction back to 30K, that might not happen. But then again, you know what we're going to look at on the chart is to show you guys where Bitcoin is on the macro and what's most likely to take place next. Because we don't just go up forever. We do have to see consolidations and some corrections. Like for example, right here, you know, this correction that took place when Bitcoin went from 41,000 all the way down to 20, 28,000 was a 33% correction. So it's not a matter of if a correction will happen. It's a matter of how much higher will Bitcoin go in the short term before a correction happens? And then how deep will that correction be? Because if we see Bitcoin push upwards of $50,000 and do something that's similar to 2019, then trend higher above the all-time high, then see a correction back down to the all-time high and then trend even higher. You know, people that are waiting to get Bitcoin 
back at 30 to 32K, you know, might not see it that low again. And so the opportunity in this market right now is in favor of the bulls because of BlackRock, because of the ETFs and the bull run is officially in full swing right now. We're in the first or the second stage, depending on where you're looking out right now. If you're looking at the Elliott waves, you know, you could be considering this just wave number one, right? So we're arguably could just be in the first phase. Phase number two is the corrective phase. Phase number three is the most inf impulsive. Phase number four is corrective wave number four. And then wave number five is the final blow off top for Bitcoin before we go into the bull market. So what would cause Bitcoin to rally higher leading into January? Well, ETFs, BlackRock ETF to transform Bitcoin. So there's 10 reasons, 10 reasons, guys, why the Bitcoin ETF will change everything that you have to be ready for, you have to prepare for. Number 10, very little money has come into crypto since the Sam Bankman Free debacle in November 2020 because people are skeptical. They don't know which exchange is going to shut down next. You know, if FTX, the exchange that was on the top of the American Airlines arena out in Miami, Florida, you know, could go under and all the celebrities were behind it and all the big wigs, you know, Kevin O'Leary, the dude from Shark Tank that were believing in it, the back in these companies, everyone's talking about it. No one saw it coming. Even Gary Gensler that met with Sam Bankman Free multiple times. So nobody saw that coming, meaning anything. So that showed everyone that anything in crypto could happen and nothing is safe, especially after stablecoin depegging, USDC depegging, you know, UST depegging. So stablecoins aren't even safe. So where is your money safe? So very little money has climbed in and prices though have been climbing, but not based on new fiat money coming into Bitcoin. It's really been on you know stablecoin money from Tether coming into. And I'm gonna show you guys on the chart why that's true and what's about to happen next for USDT. So check this out. Number nine, Wall Street views anything that's down 50% from its all-time high as dead because anything that's below 50%, why would you, I wanna buy that? You know, that's, that's trash, it's down from its all-time high. Ethereum was down 52% from its all-time high. And Bitcoin is only down 37%, so it's almost dead right now, even though it's rallying and the ETF will push us much closer to where Wall Street and 10 trillion US dollars of ETF money gets interested in the markets. And so number eight, Wall Street can't, for regulatory reasons, take massive positions on Coinbase and they can't do self-custody. They can buy the ETF though, but if you're placing a million or a billion dollar buy order and you're having to pay a Coinbase exchange fee, that makes absolutely no sense, right? So number seven, there are 40,000 RIAs in the US alone that advise people. They can't advise Coinbase or self-custody, but they can and they will advise the ETF, especially the salespeople that are gonna call the wealthy clients. So number six, even sophisticated retail with Coinbase accounts, they face tax problems for buying Bitcoin itself, then selling and rolling into the ETFs. Because if you buy Bitcoin, it goes up, you sell it, you take a short-term capital gains tax on that. And if you buy the ETF, you have tax problems. So they just prefer waiting getting in the ETF and then letting BlackRock manage it for them. So number five, corporate treasuries uh, can much more easily take a small position on the ETF than deal with what uh, MSTR and Tesla did for a government standpoint. Number four, many users would prefer not dealing with keys and multi-sigs versus just owning the ETF. It solves the custody problem because with self-custody, you have to worry also about losing your, your ledger or your private keys or your seed phrases and all that, and all that stuff. So you do have to be careful with self-custody um, but self-custody is obviously the, the safest way if you trust yourself. If you don't trust yourself, then you're trusting BlackRock. The ETF with the uh, Im, Imperimature, or Im, immature, whatever you call that word of BlackRock or Fidelity, legitimizes things, right? So it makes it 100 times easier to explain to your board or your boss than GBTC, because what does that even mean, right? If you're like, oh, this is with BlackRock. They're like, yeah, oh yeah, BlackRock's massive. We trust this now. Right? So that's where late money is coming in. So although the ETF doesn't explicitly say Bitcoin is not a security, it implicitly does at this stage because the SEC would be approving something and then trying to go back on it to say, oh, now Bitcoin's a security, which they're just not going to do. And so many boomers don't understand uh, Bitcoin right now. It's confusing. Right? The technology in this industry makes you scratch your head. It makes all of us scratch our head unless you're a developer and you created it. It doesn't make any sense, so it's hard to understand all of it. And so that's how no one really saw, you know, Terra Luna collapse, and even a lot of the developers. So there's some backdoor coding in a lot of these projects that even developers can't catch. And so the risk is definitely there, but the ETF is a simple way to play the number go up game for an entirely new asset class, you know, compared to the stock market. And so when we look at gold, what happened to gold after the first gold 
ETF was approved back in 2004. Well, gold went on an eight year bull run. Absolutely insane. You know, the price of gold was $700 when SPDR gold shares rolled out their first gold ETF in November of 2004. Notably, in August of 2011, the price of gold has skyrocketed 254% to reach a new all time high of 2,450. Easy, measly, measly little $2,450. So when people see that, you know, in the crypto market, that that's one of those things that you know yeah it's it's a good it's a good return but it's nothing compared to what happened to the altcoin market andrew can you update us on how this gold reevaluation process will roll out yes shane as our subscribers know this process was kicked off following the bank of international settlements revaluing physical gold as a first year asset class on the 1st of january which is when gold began competing against us treasuries now, providing these really providing central banks, sovereigns, commercial trading advisors and investors an alternative far superior, zero counterparty risk, alternative, safe haven investment and hedging vehicle. Now, during the course of this year, this alternative safe haven pivot sparked the largest central bank sovereign physical gold demand in history, severely impacting available global supply. None of this is seen inside the casino. Market footprints evidences central banks hedging previously unfactored US Treasury tail risk by their actions is already weighing on Treasury demand. This, this, it's this lack of Treasury uptake that's actually been spiking the bond yields higher as central banks alongside institutional investors who have a global view seek real asset alternatives which of course include cash, but also gold. And under the Fed's induced smoke and mirrors haze, every central bank, including the Bank of International Settlements, who one year ago, almost to the day in November 2022, bought back their entire gold derivative positions, concluded it on that day, taking advantage of the Fed's synthetic attempt to cap the dollar price of gold. Now, Note, though, that despite the Fed's best efforts, exactly one year later, gold is carving out a higher stair step, over $350 per ounce higher than the $1,618 point, the exact point the Bank of International Settlements covered the last of their bets against a rising gold price. Look, there's only one reason gold is carving out a higher stair step to rally from in 2024. Every other global central bank, both Western and the entire global South, have been openly on record as well as surreptitiously off record buying physical gold. And this leads to just one conclusion. Global central banks are accruing physical gold so they can revalue this gold at close to the market price. And when any one of these central banks commences this process, it will trigger every other central bank to synchronize. And as soon as this happens, the Fed will have basically one of two options. Either they admit they've sold title to the Treasury gold to multiple part parties. Well, clearly that's not an option. Or they are going to have to move to revalue this 831 tons. This is a massive opportunity, really, to capitalize on this window. So looking at the total crypto market cap, excluding Bitcoin, if you want generational wealth and you only have like a thousand, five thousand or ten thousand dollars and you don't you don't want to wait 50 years for gold to mature to fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, whatever gold goes to over the next 20 to 50 years and you want to make money fast. Remember guys, a lot of people say, you know, if you make money fast, it's too good to be true. No, that's not true. No, that's not too good to be true. You just have to be in the right industry that allows it to be possible. And crypto is that industry. And also you need to have passive income on the front end that can help you generate residual income to be able to put into the projects that you believe in. If you want to accumulate gold, if you want to accumulate real estate, if you want to accumulate that. So our number one recommendation will be in the description below to get started with. Now, looking at this. So 554 days, Bitcoin has been below, or the entire crypto market cap, excluding Bitcoin, has been below roughly $667 billion. And we're just breaking out right now. So for 574 days, 
we've been below here. If we go back to the last bear market, we were below, you know, 130 ish billion dollars for 728 days before we broke out. If we go back to the bull run before that, we were below, you know, $84 million for about 400 days. And we see a similar thing play out on the chart where when we broke above this resistance of the bear market, we formed a, a high that was retesting somewhat close to the previous high. And then a retracement, we saw a retracement, a correction down to the resistance as support. And we saw some interesting thing hap happen on the RSI. We saw the RSI push back up in March of 2016 to about 79 on the RSI, come back down and then rally back up again and go into about 90, 97 for this rally here before we saw another correction take place. So we blasted through the all-time high. After the breakout, retest, boom, skyrocket up. Now, what happened right here? Well, we saw a breakout of the resistance, retest as support, saw the same thing on the RSI. We saw the RSI come upwards of 79, almost exactly to the T, a sell-off, just like the bull run before that, and then a blast off all the way up here, getting in 96 territory, and then another sell-off to the downside and the RSI dropping again. So coincidentally enough, we are at 74 on the RSI, just barely breaking above the resistance um, that we were struggling to break from 574 days beneath it. And now we're coming up to 79. And so my prediction here is we're going to see the RSI push higher in the short term through this month because the window for the ETF for approvals is early January, January 5th to January 10th. It's, it's December 10th right now, so about a month. So we have less than four weeks to see what's gonna happen next for these markets and a potential rejection. So this is my warning for you. There is some upside here, but there's a lot of risk that we're gonna see a correction to the downside for better entry points. So I would expect the markets to come up, rally up within this zone of resistance right here, which acted as support all the way back in January of 2022 for the complacency stage. And then we get rejected from this we see a correction down to this resistance as support. On the RSI, we could see the RSI come down one final time, and then we take off out of here to do a blow off top on the RSI upwards of 93, and then we start coming down on the RSI. And that would look like $2 trillion, anywhere upwards of three, four, five trillion dollars for the entire altcoin market cap. So I would expect the next move for Bitcoin and the altcoin market cap to be absolutely insane. And what we're forming right now is wave number one in the Elliott wave. Wave number two could come all the way back down to 667. And wave number three would be the most impulsive move anywhere near, you know, maybe $3 trillion, maybe $5 trillion. If we see a back test of the all time high, maybe it comes back down to back test and then we push upwards of $5 trillion for wave number five in the Elliott wave. I would expect something like this to take place. And then for the bear market to happen in 2026, some type of economic disaster to take place back here. Because going into election year, election is happening next year, guys. Do you really think that Biden and the people that want to be reelected are going to issue in some sort of crash in an economic disaster during the year that they need to be reelected? No, they want Americans to feel good. They want them to feel prosperous. They want you to feel wealthy. So what they would ensure is that the markets stay bullish through 2024. Now, of course, there'd be some corrections on the way up, you know, maybe 10, 15, 20, 30, 40% corrections, you know, as we see these massive weekly green candles and then the 20% corrections, cool off period in between wave number three, you know, maybe to see something like this and, you know, for us just to work our way up for wave number three, it doesn't mean we're just gonna go straight up and blast off to the moon just yet. But I do wanna show you something because we did see a cross on the MACD indicator right here and as you guys see, when we saw this cross and we saw the MACD line cross above the signal line, the last time that this happened was exactly right around the last time that we broke out from the resistance that we were stuck below for 728 days beneath $130 billion for the total altcoin market cap. So we saw a breakout, a back test, and then we saw the momentum shift in favor of the bulls. So look at the MACD indicator, guys, went absolutely Massive green territory, right? We saw the MACD line above the signal line, and then we saw it cross below it right about here. So right in April of 2022. Now, coincidentally enough, where were we in April of 2022? That was right when we fell off a shelf and we dropped all the way from about almost $1 trillion all the way down to 
400 to 500 billion dollars. So we saw a massive crash in the markets. Now, what is happening right now? We are at the verge of a massive move to the upside. Now, sure, there could be a correction in the short term, but after that, what happens next, guys? I think you know the answer here. If it happens anywhere similar to the last bull run, massive amounts of cheesecake at the Cheesecake Factory we can all be purchasing that's gonna have us clogging the toilets. They're gonna kick us out because of all the gains we're gobbling up in these markets. So XRP to the US dollar, what does that mean for XRP? Well, on the MACD indicator, what do we see happening right here? It's building momentum right now. So we're in positive territory. You know, we saw the MACD line cross below the signal line back here for the bear market in XRP dropping down from, you know, 80 something cents all the way down to 29 cents. And so we're getting ready for a breakout, guys. The last time that we were in this territory was roughly March of 2021. And what do we see? We saw XRP break out after the lawsuit, little red candle right here, but consolidation period, then break out again to the, to the high of 2021. And so even if we see a red candle in the short term for XRP to this upward trending support right here, I would expect the next move for XRP to be massive. The only real resistance right here is roughly at 80 cents. And then the only other resistance is like two bucks before the all time high. So XRP's next move could put it upwards of a dollar and 30 cents, I believe for XRP before we see a corrective wave number two before wave number three, what would cause that massive amounts of stimulus, massive amounts of money printing, just bullish news from the Fed, you know, the Fed pushing off their rate cuts, because we all know that it's not when the Fed raises rates that causes a market crash. It's when they drastically cut rates um, in response to a recession or a response to something breaking in the economy. And so Ripple is expanding their global payout coverage of cross-border payment solutions. So they are gearing up with their technology to be able to cover the globe. And one key update, Ripple Payments now offers uh, expanded access to Ripple's global network of more than 70 crypto and traditional payout markets, providing nearly 100% global payout coverage through a single onboarding according to the release they put out. And the solution is also being introduced to a broader customer base, including small to medium-sized businesses, as Ripple has secured more than 30 licenses across the United States. And Ripple Payments also features new integrations with the XRP Ledger's native decentralized exchange that improve product performance and lower barriers, lowers the barriers of entry in, uh, to new markets by tapping into global liquidity options per the release. And so they're saying that we see the tokenization of real world assets is about as exciting as anything out there as they're diving into this. Real world assets are the future. Now, if you wanna see some other market performance uh, for these projects in volatility analysis, you can go to CryptoRank.io and it'll show you some projects that are crushing it based on different categories that you wanna sort based on gainers, losers, see some new IDOs, ICOs, in, in terms of the return on income on some of these projects. And it's absolutely insane how early you are because the majority of the IDOs, you know, or the IGOs, initial game offerings or ICOs, people that still use that term or I, I initial DEX offerings, right? So people attach the narrative, whether it's a game, so it's an IGO, or if it's a DEX, it's an IDO, or if it's an ICO, it's initial coin offering. And the amount of these that are gonna be launched in 2024, right now, the gains that you're making in the market is gonna give you the ability to be able to diversify between a lot of newer projects. So if there's any project specifically you want us to cover on the channel, feel free to uh, drop it in the comments below. And um, if you guys wanna see our top altcoin picks as well and get early bird access to our financial education platform, when we launch that, you can go to bullrunners.com, click the link on the page, put in your best email address, You'll be subscribed to our video newsletter and you can plug in with our telegram group as well too that's free go check that out i know you guys are going to love it now some news just broke about ban protocol revealing plans to integrate with the xrp ledger in a strategic move that will enable it to become the primary oracle provider for the network's mainnet and evm sign chains and the benefits of this integration according to this announcement it's going to provide decentralized oracle price feeds for the xrp ledger and Ethereum virtual machine sidechain. So hence the initiative will offer reliable and accessible real-time market data for top crypto assets, including XRP, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Enabling seamless Oracle integration with decentralized applications opens pathways for global XRP ledger developers to explore innovation and expand DeFi opportunities. That's what Band Protocol said in a statement. And so as you guys obviously know, Chainlink is the king of oracles to be able to connect, you know, different things together in the real world. But look what XRP is starting to do now. So they're they're jumping in the space to acquire some of that market share. Now, right here, this is big because the U.S. Congressional Bill 
HR 8950 is set for a vote in January 2024, which if approved will cement crypto as a commodity, not a security. All crypto on the blockchain will be regulated as a commodity by the CFTC. This will be signed into US law in early in January when the HR 8950 Digital Commodities Consumer Protection Act of 2022 goes for a final vote and the presidential signature. And the SEC will get jurisdiction on securities backed by crypto assets like spot ETFs. And so this is massive, guys. You can check this out in the community section and read through this if you want. So we'll let you know what happens there. But all signs are green. All signs are ready for takeoff. I mean, we're taking off right now. There's going to be some turbulence. But what's the big sign of takeoff? It's Tether's dominance, USDT. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but I want to show you guys what happened on the MACD. So as you can see back here, we're in this rising wedge for Tether's dominance, meaning that when the market cap of the industry you know, is, is growing, if Tether's dominance is growing, it means people are more bearish on altcoins. They're more bearish on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all altcoins, and they're bullish on preserving their income, meaning putting it into Tether and stable coins. And so we see Tether's dominance go up. That's when we're in a bear market. So actually, as money comes out of the industry, it goes into stable coins, and we see Tether's dominance go up. When we see Tether's dominance go down, that's where we're in a bull market. And that's what we saw happen in October of 2020. You know, that's when Bitcoin, when we go back here, what happened to Bitcoin in October of 2020, we were right here at this breakout period, passing the, the high of 2019 and breaking through the all time high by uh, January of 2021, all the way upwards of $42,000, $42, guys, right there. So that's when we saw Tether's dominance drastically fall to the downside, break this upward trending support right here and then bottom out at about 1.9%. Now on the MACD, we saw the MACD line cross, if I move my camera right here, you guys can see the MACD line crossing below the signal line, the momentum shift in favor of the uh, the bears that were bearish on Tether, meaning they were bullish on our altcoins and Bitcoin, putting money into the crypto market and the crypto market to go absolutely insane while we saw this drop, the dominance of Tether drop drastically and then it bottomed out on its way back up, what did we see happen? We saw the MACD line cross above, cross above the signal line, and then Tether's dominance to go right back up really, really fast in May of 2021 for that dead cap bounce for the all time high for Bitcoin. And then the dominance fell again. And so this is what's crazy to watch on these charts right here, guys, because then we saw the MACD line, right, cross above the signal line, go all the way up into positive territory, momentum shifted. And then we saw another cross happen again. Tether's dominance dropped after that. So it's very easy to see when this is going to be happening, you know, kind of like a heartbeat, right? Your frequency, the frequency of, of your heartbeat, you know, it's like the frequency of these markets as well, too. And when you can analyze and look at this stuff, it gives you a good idea of what's going to happen next. And as you can see right here, you know, we've been in this symmetrical triangle for USDT, and it recently broke this upward trending support, very similar to what happened right here in December of 2020 when Tether's dominance dropped and crypto was going absolutely parabolic. Now, what just happened? Well, Tether's dominance dropping, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all altcoins are going up and we will see a bottoming out here soon because on the MACD, we saw a cross where the MACD crossed below the signal line, the momentum shifted. We will see a bottoming happening here. Now, when that happens, is anyone's guess, it might be on or near the ETF approval, maybe a little bit after it because the hype right, is high the excitement and the greed is high right now for the ETFs, then what will happen after the ETFs? That hype and that excitement is going to wear off. So I would expect, you know, us to rally further for the markets in the short term up to those key resistance points that I showed you on the chart for the altcoin market to get a little bit higher on the RSI. And then for us to see a correction back down relatively soon for Tether to come up in the dominance and Tether's dominance to rally up, depending on how high we go. And then for us to continue further to the downside for Tether's dominance for a bottom. And so how much lower we will go, we'll see. And, and when we'll bottom out before we rally up, we'll see what happens with Tether. But we're almost close to a reversal happening on the MACD. And when that happens, then just expect money to flow out of gaming, out of gambling, out of AI, out of meme coins, out of Ethereum, out of Bitcoin for a sell-off into Tether and then to come back into the markets when everyone's ready to 
back up the truck for the dip. And then money flows back out of the stable coins and into the market. So you guys have to be ready for that. And so for your information, this is what Robert Kiyosaki just posted. Bank credit just sold off like 2008. He's saying, get some cash out of the banks as you need cash. This may be the start of the biggest crash in history. Hope I'm wrong, yet no time to play Russian roulette with your life. Now, he's been calling for a crash every single year, and eventually he's going to be right because it's not it's not if, it's when. So if you cry wolf enough times, eventually the wolf shows up, and then everyone during that period of crying wolf, they call you an idiot. They look at you like you're, like you're a lunatic. Then when it happens, you could be the one who said, I told you so. So I know that Robert Kiyosaki is, will be the one who said, I told you so to everyone who didn't believe that a crash is happening because everything's inflated, guys. Something's going to happen. Now, when, when will it happen? Will it be 2024, 2005, 2026 or a little bit longer? Nobody knows because it's like the Fed trying to hold the wall for as long as possible. You know, how long can they hold that before the water just freaking flattens them down and then drowns the rest of us that aren't ready for it? Here's a real key here. I haven't shown this in a while, but the historical money print orders right here, 2023 was lower in terms of how much money they were print, putting out there from 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, all the way before 2010. 2024, I think it's going to be a bullish year. We're putting in more money now than what happened in 2020 and 2019. So that money has to flow somewhere And the gross debt in the United States is projected to grow from $30 trillion to over $50 trillion. It's actually 33 trillion right now, but it's going to grow over 50 trillion dollars based on their proposed proposed budget. You know, with Janet Yellen, you know the and the, and freaking Joe, Joe Biden, you know, and Jerome Powell going burr on the money printer. So that money is going to flow somewhere. And at the same time, central banks are on pace to buy over a thousand tons of gold in 2023. Is that a coincidence that they're putting more money in the system and now they're buying more gold than ever before? What are they getting ready for, guys? Reevaluation. Now, will that reevaluation um, be something that they have XRP back to gold? We'll see. There's a lot of conspiracies out there, but nonetheless, everything that I just showed you in this video is all gearing up for a massive move to the upside, and you guys have to be ready. Now, how do you get ready? You grab your bags, you get in the truck, you back it up all the way to the bank, you pack more bags, leaving no bags left behind, pack them and stack them because the spending power of the dollar is going to continue to go down in value. Central banks know this. You now know this. Based on inflation, they're backing up the truck for gold. They're getting the ETFs ready. They're getting ready for a complete financial overhaul and a reset. Going to ISO 20022, overhaul in the SWIFT system. It has to happen, guys. It's evolution at its finest. And so for you, you're going to be camping on the beaches of the moon with us. And together, we're all going up. So discover our top altcoin picks and get early bird access to our financial education platform first when we announce that by going to bullrunners.com, click the button on the page, put in your best email address, and if you guys want to see one of the best ways to be able to make money online and create passive income, helping business owners save money on every single employee that they have, ask yourself, how many business owners do you know? If you're not a business owner and you know a lot of business owners, we have an amazing way for you to be able to create passive income so you can accumulate more crypto. If it does dip, you'll be ready to back up the truck for the dip. Check this out. Are you looking for a way to make more money? If the answer is yes, I'm going to show you how you can earn an extra $100,000 in the next 12 months. This may sound crazy, but we are going to sell free money to business owners. Let me explain how this works. Business owners are required to pay FICA taxes if they have employees on their payroll. And these FICA taxes are 7.65% of the business owner's income. So what if there was a free program that was created that helps business owners reduce the amount that they have to pay in FICA taxes? Do you think that business owners would be interested in that? Of course they would. This free program will help the employer or the business owner save $700 to $800 per employee that they have on payroll on an annual basis. If you introduce business owners to this program, you will earn $5 per employee per month. So if you refer a business that has 100 employees, you will make $500 per month. If you refer a business that has 1,000 employees, that means you make $5,000 per month. This is an incredible way to create a long-lasting residual income. All all you need to do is connect with the business owner and ask them if they'd be interested in saving money on their FICA taxes for free. I guarantee that they will say yes. This business has 47 employees and we were able to help them save over $37,000 per year. This business has 2,670 employees and we were able to help them save over $2 million per year. And this business has 659 employees and we were able to help them save $493,000 per year. So if you head down to the description below, 
below this video, you'll see a link where you can sign up as an affiliate. And once you sign up as an affiliate, you'll get access to two links. So you'll get a business application link that looks like this. I'll copy and paste this. There's a presentation that explains exactly what the program is and how it works. And a business owner would just click this link right here. They would apply and then they'll immediately be able to book a call with one of the sales guys, one of the reps at Innovative Health, which is the company that created this program. When you refer a business owner, you will see those referred clients in your affiliate dashboard. And if you refer affiliates through this link here, those referred affiliates will show up in your dashboard and you will see your override commissions. You're going to be making $2 on uh, the activity. Let's say that you know your affiliate refers a business that affiliate is going to get the $5. You will make a $2 override, $2 per employee per month. So if you're ready to build a residual income with this amazing opportunity, head down to the description below this video, click the link and apply to become an affiliate. We will add you to our community and give you all the training and tools that you need to become successful. So thank you for watching this video today and we'll see you in the next one.